Come on! I'm working in my shop today and I've got a new project that I am really excited to show you guys. So this is it, it is a 2000 XJ. I picked this thing up about three or four years ago. My son needed a car that he could drive to college up in Rexburg, Idaho. This was the perfect choice for the snowy roads. When we got this thing, it was a bone stock vanilla XJ. So it had saggy doors. It's got a little bit of rust, but it was pretty clean. The interior was dirty. So we thought this vehicle was gonna be a great college car for him, and it was for about a year. He had fun driving it off road. He had fun driving it around town. And then he started to have overheating issues. I think it had a bad heater core and was slowly losing fluid. And unfortunately that engine got overheated multiple times. And eventually I'm pretty sure we cracked the head in this thing. That was really common in like 2000 and 2001 on these. So they usually crack right under the oil filler cap. So when I looked down in there, I could see what looked like a hairline crack and maybe a little bit of radiator fluid coming through. You can see the oil on this cap looks a little frothy and you can see this brown sludge in there. All right, let me get a little flashlight, see if I can show you. So I don't know if you could see the crack or not, but I thought I saw it one time and it has all the symptoms of a cracked head. This engine has like 225,000 miles on it. So it had a good life. It lived a long time, but I'm not ready to be done with it. And I think I have a solution. So we've been working on a lot of XJs lately. We've been doing some maintenance on the banana. We did a big chop on the tangerine. We've got Deja Blue that we're building for Robbie for the off-road games. So I'm excited to get working on this so I can join the Frameless and Shameless Club. So this is an engine that I pulled out of one of my WJs. So I've got four of these WJs. One was my wife's favorite car ever. And when she was done with it, my son drove it to high school. Somebody ran a four-way stop. That one got totaled. That's what this engine came out of. We bought a replacement for that. My youngest son Bridger's driving that one. Then I found two that had bad transmissions and the guy was almost giving them away. They were cheap. So I picked both of those up. Maybe one day I'll build one for my wife to drive. Those are future projects. Right now, I just gotta get this XJ running. My plan is pull that head, pull this head, get this one rebuilt. This is the Tupi head or Tuppy head. Somewhere cast in here is the letters T-U-P-Y. This came out of like a 2003 Grand Cherokee. So it's newer, it's reinforced, it's 11% better. Some of you are probably thinking, man, it would just be easier to drop that whole engine in here. And it probably would, except it won't go. They made some really small differences between the WJ and the XJ engine block. This head's coming off, that head's coming off, that one's gonna get rebuilt, this one's gonna get thrown away, and we'll put this thing back together and see how it runs. The first thing I wanna do here is get this valve cover off so I can look in there and make sure this thing really is cracked so I'll know my solution is gonna work. So I got all this stuff that I gotta get out of the way. Okay, I got my valve cover off and I'm drying everything out in here so I can look down and see. And right here between cylinder three and four, I think I can see a really, really faint hairline crack. I also see enough signs of moisture in this engine that I'm just confident it's cracked. This oil looks really sludgy to me. Looks like it's got water. I think I've seen enough here. I'm gonna switch over to that other engine and start pulling that head off because that's the one I need to take to the guy that's gonna rebuild it. We'll get him working and then I can pull this off while he's going. Okay, all I need off this engine is the head. So everything else that's in the way can come off. Intake manifold, exhaust manifold, all the stuff on the front, valve cover, everything else gets out of the way, then I can pull the head off. All right, the last couple bolts are way back in here. I'm gonna show you. There's one in there, there's one over there, and one more right there. I only have to remove the things that are attached to the head, and there's really not that many. Everything else here is attached to the block. So if I get this intake manifold and exhaust manifold off, I think I'm ready to go. I can start pulling head bolts. The exhaust valves look nice and white, like they have a coating of ash on them. And the intake valves look black, like they have a coating of like carbon and oil. That's pretty normal, especially for an engine with 150,000 miles on it. I'm kind of thinking about just reusing this as is, kind of thinking about rebuilding it. I'll figure that out and let you know. I'm gonna pull off all the rocker arm bolts, pull off all the push rods, and then this head can come out of here. All right, this head should be ready to come off. I've made a nice little landing spot for it over here on my table. Let's see what happens. All right, 
there's my block. Doesn't look too bad. Okay, after all that, you can look down and see my pistons now. There we go. It's a little dirty, but not bad. Not bad for 150,000 miles. Yeah, I'd definitely put this back together and run it, but I can't. I've got to use the one that's in there. So I'm gonna look over this head really good and make sure that it's usable, make sure that I'm really comfortable with it. Then I've got to either rebuild it or just use it as is and drop it back in this Jeep. After thinking it over, I decided to play it safe and get this head rebuilt. See that? That's the toupee or tuppy casting. That means it's the good one. All right, it's also got a WJ right there, which I'm pretty sure means winning Jeep, but enough of the WJ talk because I'm building an XJ right now. So back to that. It is a rainy morning. I'm heading into work right now. And on the way, I'm gonna stop by Route 9 and drop off this head. Hopefully the guy can get it turned around pretty fast because I want to have this thing running before the off-road games. The door is open. That's a good sign. It looks like he's here. All right, I'm here at Route 9. They've taken a look at this cylinder head. They think they can have it back together by this weekend, which is awesome. These guys are fantastic. He's got the coolest equipment here. He's going to soak it in this, which is like an amazing dishwasher that will clean all of the gunk off that thing. So it'll come back shiny and new. And there's just cool stuff everywhere here. Okay, David Route 9 has been super good to us. He told me I need to find the valve seals and he can have that thing back together in a few days. That mission was a success. Now I'm off to work. Okay, I'm working out here this morning in my shop. It is a new day and that head is done. It's ready for me to pick up. So I got to get everything out of here. I've got to remove the head, the intake manifold, the exhaust manifold. I'm replacing the radiator. I got to get all this stuff out so I can put all the new stuff back in. I'm out here in my shop this morning and I'm really excited to work on this Cherokee, but we're leaving for the Salt Lake Expo right now. I'm gonna take off this weekend, head up there. I'm gonna bring you with me and I'm gonna show you like the top five coolest things that I find at the Expo. Then I'm gonna get back down here and start working on this thing. Hopefully have it ready before the off-road games. Hey, we just arrived here at the show and Hefe's pulling in the trailer behind us. He's got all the Matt's off-road stuff, and I think Matt's right behind him with the Morvair and the banana. Tom, are you coming to Joe's Crab Shack? Heck yeah, I'm coming. Yeah, yeah. All right, it is Friday night at the Salt Lake Expo and things are starting to wind down, but this is one of the coolest things at the Expo because I used to work for Jumping Jack Trailer. I helped, I helped weld up their very first prototype trailer like 20 years ago. They're still in business. These guys are awesome. It's a super cool product and I just love these guys. So this is definitely one of the coolest things at the show. Okay, I'm here with Kevin at Flog. These guys helped me put together my fuel tank and they're definitely one of my favorite things at the show. All right, I'm in the Yankum's rope booth and this is one of the coolest things at the Salt Lake Expo. Love Yankum ropes, use all their products. And I'm picking up a fair lead right now from Alan for a new Jeep I'm working on. This is gonna be awesome. I can't wait to see it. Yeah. There you go. Okay, using these on Dig Dug and they are the best. Okay, I'm here at the Easy Flate booth. I've been using their product for a while now. This is my favorite tire inflation system. This is the Hyperflex you got Easy it. Flate system. It is. Right on. This is Dustin, the owner. Hey, everybody. We got four tire hose inflation and deflation systems. Check us out at easyflate.com. Okay, we've had a fantastic time at the Salt Lake Expo. We're tearing down our booth. For those of you that stopped by and saw us, thanks. For those of you that are seeing us right now, wherever you are, thank you too. We'll be back to work on Monday. I approve this message. I'm here at Trail Mater's booth in Trail Mater, and this is one of the coolest things at the Salt Lake Expo. Love this rig. I'm gonna show you some of the other rigs in, in uh, Rory's booth. He brought four up here, and they are all awesome. What do you think, Colin? Dude, these rigs are awesome. Rory, he knows what he's doing. Yes, he does. I'm back from the expo and should be working on the XJ today, but Holly called and wanted to go on a trail ride, so I'm heading out to procrastinate. All right, I'm out here with Holly this morning. She invited me to come out on a little ride, and we're going to go do Milt's Mile Light. We are. And she's in the taco, so I'm going to have a little trouble keeping up with her because she knows this area <laughs> so good. You're warming him up. He wants to go. Oh, come on! Yeah! You got it flat up here. 
Okay, we just pulled out up on the top. Holly's right here next to me. Hi. We're gonna drop back into the sand dunes and ride out of here. All right, we just got off the trail. That was super fun. Thanks for taking me on that. Yeah, of course, anytime. We did Milt Smile Light. Highly recommend. Yep, you don't need lockers. Yeah, Holly got through no lockers. I used mine a little bit, I cheated. Tom Tom. Here's one of those jumping jack trailers out in a wild. These things are awesome. Okay, I should go home right now, but Matt's at the yard and I know he's getting ready for the games and there's a ton of stuff to do. I'm gonna stop by on the way home and check on him, see what's happening. I stopped in to check on Matt. He just got the Morvair back together. I think we're ready for a test drive. Yeah. You gonna take it out? Launch it a couple of times. So he's got it tested, which means he has to try to break it really quick. If yeah. it doesn't break, then it'll go to the games. Yeah. So we're going high speed run, low speed run, and then a hard launch. No vibes at all. Okay, so we went from a two to one to a three to one in this transfer case. That's going to make a big difference for all of I don't know what's on the other end. rough but that's really the rev limiter right at 5500 rpm it just starts cutting fuel that's where i cut them off and thank you guys for hanging out with us today always some fun going on at the yard i'm glad i stopped in like i said there is always fun stuff going on at the yard now i'm gonna head home get back to work get this xj put together trying to get this exhaust manifold off finally it's out of there I got all my head bolts stripped off. I'm ready to pull this head off. Hopefully it'll come without trouble. It's been glued on there for I don't know how long. So see what happens. I think it's right in here. All right, this thing's a mess. Let me show you the new one. It looks awesome. All right, I got this head back from Route 9 and the thing looks amazing. I am so happy with it. The guy turned it around in like a day and a half. He is awesome, his name's Dave. Thank you, Dave. The thing looks great. He resurfaced the bottom side, the deck. He resurfaced the intake exhaust side. He put in new valve guides. He hot tanked the thing and cleaned it all up and did a three angle valve job. Thank you, this is awesome. I can't wait to hear it run. Right now, everybody is scrambling to get their stuff ready for the off-road games, including me. So everything's been really crazy and busy, but we are having a good time. things are going really good here we've got the installation on the run I did create a little problem for myself when I took the exhaust manifolds out the bolts were so rusted that I did some grinding and hacking with a zip disc and I cut right into one of the exhaust pipes so I've got to weld that back together before I stick my exhaust manifold back in I'm gonna do that now
All right, I've got the engine mostly back together. The head has been replaced, the new gaskets are in, and it's all torqued down. I adjusted the valve lash and I torqued down the valve cover with a new gasket. The intake and exhaust manifolds are on, but the engine bay is still a little disassembled. So this is the perfect time for me to replace the radiator because this engine died from some kind of an overheating issue. So just to be safe, I'm gonna put in a new radiator and all new hoses radiator that I bought to put in this engine is the cheapest one that I could get off Amazon that had aluminum tanks on the sides. No plastic on this radiator. The welding on this looks pretty good. So as long as it doesn't leak, I think it's going to keep this XJ cool. All right, so far the cheapy uh, radiator is not working out to be that good. This fitting is the wrong size and I've been fighting it for like two hours trying different ways to connect it to the hose. Finally, I just cut, chopped off the end of that hose and I'm splicing it together with a little piece of tube here. I'll show you the hose I'm working on. It's been super frustrating. Right here. So if I connect these two together, I think I can finish putting this radiator in and drive this thing. I worked late last night getting everything put together on this. All I've got left to do is an oil change and I'm ready to start it. All right, I'm glad we're getting that oil out of there because it was thick and sludgy, which is not good, but probably because we had the cracked head, so we were getting radiator fluid in the oil. So I'm gonna fill it back up. I like to run this Shell Rotella T6, the 5W40. It's the same thing I run in my diesel because that's a diesel oil, but it has a lot of zinc in it. So it's good for flat tappet engines. And I like the 40 weight in an old engine like this. Okay, I'm waiting for that oil to drain and I'm checking out these wheels. These are stock wheels that came off of a TJ. My son and I mounted them up when we were doing some upgrades on this. Ultra delivery from O'Reilly. I got a Wix 51515 XP. That is the exact filter we needed. Great timing. All right, I'm gonna run this extra long oil filter because I know this engine's old, so it probably has low oil pressure. And that'll give it more filter media to go through. So we'll try that. Okay, this thing has been down for a long time, but I am finally ready to fire it up and see if it's gonna run. This always makes me nervous because there's so many little things that could go wrong, but we're at that point where we gotta find out. All right, it says we're out of gas. I think it'll have enough gas to fire up, but we're gonna find out here. Everybody clear? Come on! Okay, that pur we gotta purge that fuel line because these things vapor lock all by themselves. Oh, shoot, it's full. It might not have had all the cylinders because of the air in the fuel line, but it calmed down and it sounds good right now. Let's take a look. There's gonna be a lot of stuff smoking off right here because my oily hands are all over the exhaust and the intake. So that's gonna burn and smoke for a minute. That's just what happened. That was awesome, she's a runner. Now that I know it's gonna work, I'm gonna put all the air intake and we'll finish up some of these vacuum lines and stuff and then we'll get out on a test drive. Okay, I've been driving this Jeep for a couple of days and I think it's great. It's not overheating, it's running really good. And I've got Angela in it right now. We're heading over to Walmart. What do you think of this thing? Seems to be running good. It's good to be back in a Jeep again, but Tom did mention it has death wobble. So yeah, that made me concerned. The word death, I don't like to hear it. Okay, yeah, there are a few things that need to be fixed. We're not done with this Jeep, but it's a runner. I'm really happy with it. So we're gonna keep working on this thing. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. The shaft on the bus goes round and round. The pistons on the bus go up and down.